Moshe Rabbeinu in this week's parasha has his first introduction to the Rabbeinu Shalom and to prophecy by the sne, by the burning bush. And the Torah describes to us exactly what Moshe Rabbeinu was looking at. The Torah says that the sne was boya be'esh, was burning with fire. Vahasne einenu uchal, that the actual branches of the bush were just not being consumed. Moshe Rabbeinu looked in astonishment. What's happening? What am I seeing? What's the message? Says the Slana Rebbe and the Nesiva Shalom, an amazing idea. He says, you know what the message that the Rabbeinu Shalom was trying to tell Moshe Rabbeinu, specifically now at this point, as he was commanding Moshe Rabbeinu to go down to Mitzrayim and go and free Klal Yisrael from the Tumor of Egypt, the Rabbeinu Shalom was showing Moshe Rabbeinu the following. That the burning bush, the bush itself, represents the neshama of a yid. And the fire that was burning that bush is the tumma of Mitzrayim, the tumma of the outside world. What the Rabbi Nishalayna was hinting to Moshe Rabbeinu is, is the world is full of so much tumma, so much impurity, there's so much going on around us. But we have to remember, intrinsically, we're pure. Intrinsically, our neshamas, are perfect. And sometimes we can be surrounded by the most colorful, interesting, intriguing fires of the world that look so exciting. But yet, they're trying to burn our neshama, but it doesn't work. Because our neshama will always be pure and neshama will always be intact. A boy came to me this week and he said to me, what's going to be? And I said to him, do you know how much the Rabbi Nishalolam loves you? And he said, uh-uh, not me. Do you know what I've done? And I said, uh-uh, the Rabbi Nishalolam still does. Whatever you do, the Tum of Mitzrayim, the fires of the impurity of the world around us, will never extinguish our pure neshama. The Koshan Samagid said over the most amazing marshal. He said there was a top-class carpenter that produced a work of art, an exquisite piece of woodwork. And somebody bought it for millions of dollars in order to display his diamonds and all of his beautiful uh, watches and jewelry and silver pieces. And he had it for a number of years until he lost all of his money. The bank took it away from him and eventually it got sold and it got moved and then it got sold again. And by the time it was finished, it actually ended up in a shoemaker's storefront, actually showing shoelaces. This carpenter was once walking in the street 25 years later after he produced that piece, and his shoelace snapped. And he asked someone, tell me, where can I get a new shoelace? So they told him, oh, there's a store down the street, go in there. He goes in there, and the fellow in the store says to him, why don't you check out our selection of shoelaces? Go look at that cupboard over there. And he looks at the cupboard and it looks so familiar. And he says, hold on a minute, this is mine. This is the cabinet that I created, that I designed. It was so beautiful. It doesn't look like that anymore. It's scratched over there. It's cracked in that place. It's not how I made it, but I can still see the original beauty that I originally made it with. The Rabboni Shum puts our beautiful neshama into this world. Yes. There's a lot of fire going on. There's a lot of impurities that we're surrounded with. And we should know, however much we fall, wherever we're holding, the Rabbi Nishram can always see into that incredible, beautiful neshama that always remains intact. That's the message of this week's parasha. Have a wonderful Shabbos. To listen to more by Rabbi Avi Wiesenfeld, visit 